So our next uh, part is uh, an introduction to the autonomic nervous system and the uh, importance of it and the new developments, what we now understand that we did not know before. And uh, we'll begin with a couple of pictures. And this is a famous picture, twin girls born, one weak, one strong. The stronger one was put in the bassinet with the weaker one and flopped her arm over the weaker one. And the weaker one, who was not expected to survive, did recover and got better. And what caused that? Why did that work? Something that we do not have a medical treatment that could accomplish that same thing. Something made it work. And then similarly, Here's a program in Canada. They bring a baby into a classroom and the, the, the mom brings her baby. They're paid to do that. They're paid to just bring the baby and they just sit there. And you can see in the picture the focus and the quality of attention, the eye contact. And what that means is that there's a neurochemistry of focus and attention and the whole atmosphere of the classroom changes. It's called the Roots of Empathy program. And on the diagram, you can read later, this whole list of PhD theses that have come out of the study of the effects of this program. And again, we ask the question, why? Why does this work? It's not a cognitive correction. It's not a treatment. It's a natural involuntary response to a certain stimulus, the presence of a baby. Why does that work? Everything from violence prevention to learning skills to uh, safety, everything improves. Or similarly, what happens in the uh, program in which they've discovered, we have discovered that um, Young children learn to read better if they're leaning against a friendly dog. The scores go up. There was no change in the reading lesson. There was no change in the book. There was no change in anything. Something changed involuntarily in the autonomic nervous system. From this, we would derive the observation that many, confirm the observation that many have made that the autonomic nervous system is the foundation of wellness. This is where the action is. This is the all parts of you that operate for your survival that you cannot control directly with your mind. So our immune systems, our stress responses, our neurochemistry, our anxiety and depression, all of these, inflammation, all of these could be said to be autonomic nervous system events. So how can we interface with the autonomic nervous system for the most benefit? That will be our goal therapeutically. And this brings us to a discussion of autonomic. And we all learned in autonomic, it's a two-part system, sympathetic and parasympathetic. They're kind of reciprocal, seesaw in action, one's on, one's off. A fight or flight versus rest and rebuild are the code words the way I learned it. Perhaps you learned it a similar way. And I predict most people, if you read in the textbooks, that's what it says. And we come now to the work of Stephen Porges, who tells us, has, has really in the last 15, 20 years, developed a new understanding of the autonomic nervous system. That it has three parts, not two, and that they're sequential, not reciprocal. Three parts means, yes, there is a parasympathetic, yes, there is a sympathetic, and now there's a third branch called social. And we can understand these as survival mechanisms. All creatures have some form of very basic metabolism, digestion, respiration. More sophisticated creatures have a greater mobility. They have appendages and muscles. They can uh, deal with predator and prey 
and mating, they can deal with that more effectively. Their survival is, chances are increased. And then primates and humans have a, additional capabilities of social communication, social engagement, language. These then form a, like a stepladder or a staircase. And um, that's a new understanding with tremendous promise for a therapist, for a child education, for emergency care, uh, all branches of the health and uh, wellness field, including especially therapists. So then we can understand the context of this. We have polyvagal is the term that refers to four nuclei of the vagus nerve. And here on the poster in the diagram, you can read all about that. One is different from the other three. They all exit the brain stem and are unified, but one is different, has a different physiology and job description. That's polyvagal, many vaguses. And then Porges gives us a diagram to understand how all this developed through evolution. That there is creation of upward push for the heart, activation, and then a lower safety valve at the bottom so we don't get over activated we have a way to get back down and that creates a nice range of functionality between an upper limit and a lower limit and as creatures get more sophisticated new capabilities are added so that they, we get a stronger downward a nice strong downward then we get ways of activating a surge of adrenaline for example and that has survival value for us. And then in primates and mammals, mammals and primates, we have an additional downward, a soothing, comforting quality. That's the third branch of the autonomic nervous system. Porges gives us language for each branch. I invite you to please read this with close attention. He gives us an anatomy for each branch. The red is the vagus and the sacral plexus. The gold is the sympathetic chain. The blue is the social nervous system. I invite you to read these with close attention, especially if you're in the touch therapy game. This is what you need to know. These may serve as portals, ways to influence the autonomic nervous system. And then especially, I recommend that you really take a close look at differentiating the normal autonomic nervous system functions from the stress responses. They exist as a staircase. Each one is important. We need all three. The social gives us special capabilities. The original need, the survival value of the social is maternal bonding. That the primates and mammals need have a much bigger brain, need much more time to develop, and it needs to be hardwired, secured care for that prolonged period of dependence before autonomy is really in place. And the social branch gives us that. It's a neurochemistry by which the mom automatically, involuntarily feels the impulse to protect for an extended period of time. And then later in life that comes in handy with our social skills, our language skills, our ability to communicate. Then sympathetic, we're familiar in its normal function, that's mobilization. And parasympathetic in its normal function is rest. So we have an error in our language between rest and rebuild and fight or flight. That's apples and oranges. That's a stress response with a normal function. To clean up the language, you need to have normal function side by side or stress responses side by side. So we would say, fight or flight and immobilization as a stress response and mobilization, 
versus rest as a normal function. And similarly, the stress responses, we need to know these. Observing the staircase effect. And the uh, idea is that we descend down the staircase. If, we, if our social branch has been defeated, say we were betrayed earlier in life, we don't try social as much anymore, we'll go to sympathetic rather quickly. And if sympathetic didn't work, say earlier in life we were too small to deal, we couldn't flee, we, were, we were, had to stay where we were. And then that didn't work, so then we might find ourselves devolved down to parasympathetic. And that is a very disabled state. And Robert Scare, the neurologist, has stated that the parasympathetic state, that's the focus for trauma therapy. Get people out of the parasympathetic state. Crawl back up the staircase. Get back up to the higher level. And we do that when we create rapport with our clients. Then the dominoes naturally fall back into place. That's the social engagement system at work. And then lastly, we want to learn to recognize these. When your clients come in, it should take you 10 seconds. It should not be a long, difficult process to just observe through their mannerisms, the story they tell, and how they tell it. Learn to recognize and know that your mission as a therapist is to help them get back up the ladder. And it's true if you're an educator with children. Identify the children that are in a parasympathetic state and help them get back up the ladder. And if you're in emergency care, if you work in an emergency room, restore the social autonomic system and just like the little girl in the first picture, the newborn twin, restore the social autonomic branch and the rest will stall, uh, start to fall back into place and we'll, find, we'll recover the wellness that we have. Never lost.